Today's episode is for you if you have a friend who's struggling with depression. Or maybe you're the one struggling and you feel hopeless and alone and like you're surrounded by darkness. But we want you to know that there is hope and there are things that you can do to get help. We know that sometimes depression can feel like you're walking into a dark room. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Today we're going to hear from Talia, who struggled with depression from a really young age. We're going to hear about how she realized that she was struggling and how she got help. I was raised uh, in a very privileged Christian home. Um, and from the age of six, or you know, the youngest kind of you can get, I knew there was something wrong with me and the way that I interacted with situations and people. Um, and my parents thought I had depression, but I was a kid, and every doctor they took me to, they thought, well, she just needs a spanking, she just needs some discipline, she needs some rules. It just kind of continued, and I would have episodes of sobbing and sobbing and crying, being eight years old and, and hating myself so much. Um, and I didn't know why, and I was in such intense pain, but it wasn't a physical pain you could identify. And that pain, there was no way of, of saying why it was there or what it was there or what to do with it. And I just, I remember screaming and screaming and lashing out and just trying to find a way to, you know, get rid of that pain or identify it and know what I could do to fix it. In a Christian family, it was always, we need to pray it away, we need to, you know, trust God and you have nothing to be upset about, you have nothing to be depressed about. Look at you, you're in a privileged home, you're, you know, this cute blonde kid that has brothers that love her and friends and why are you like why are you like this when you have so much going for you? You shouldn't be depressed. That's you know, that's silly. When I was ten I remember specifically having a big blow up with my mom and um, just freaking out and it was not over anything big. It was always just little things that would maybe set me off. I would have episodes where I'd be really good and then suddenly just crash. And that pain or the weight, the heaviness of that depression and that hurt would just be overwhelming me. Um, and there was no other way to get out from under it except to kind of scream and freak out and lash out at those that loved me the most and didn't know how to help me. Um, and I remember being in my room and just, I had slammed the door so hard and um, my very favorite plate or picture like on the wall smashed and broke. And that made me even more upset and angry. And I remember grabbing pieces and just starting to cut my arm to figure out a way to release that pain because it was just so intense and I didn't know how to identify it. There was lots of episodes like that, like lots of not continued self-mutilation, but a lot of episodes of screaming and pain and not knowing where to go with this and what to do and conti continued counselors saying, well, you know, you don't have anything to be depressed about. You're from a loving family. You've never been abused. And that would just make me hate myself even more because I hated myself for feeling this way when so many people felt so much worse and had so many more reasons to be depressed than I did. I pretty well continued to despise myself for feeling that way and for needing medication um, and for having something wrong with me. Um, you know, I wanted control, I wanted to punish myself for feeling that way because I had no reason to and I just felt guilt constantly. I started making myself throw up after I ate, so then I developed a bit of an eating disorder and an unhealthy relationship with food, just trying to gain control over that, that misery and that, that wolf, basically. I describe it as a wolf who's constantly chasing you and trying to take you over and take you down. Oh
my church, I had a lot of really close friends in my youth group. Um, and some of them knew little bits. They knew I'd have these episodes um, where, you know, I'd be sobbing and the principal would have to come out of school to try to bring me in because I wouldn't go. I was so anxious, I couldn't even bring myself to walk in the door even though it was the middle of the school year and I'd been going all year. I went to a Christian school, so, you know, there wasn't necessarily accepted either that somebody would suffer from mental illness at such a young age, you know, Pray to God, God will take that sadness away. God will take you know that away and deliver you. And that didn't always work, right? Because it was an illness that was, you know, hovering over. It, it wasn't just a, a feeling of being sad. There was a concert that I went to. Um, I went to Youth for Christ or Youth Quake, Youth Quake, um, in at Briarcrest with my youth group when I was about 15 years old. Um, and there was a concert. There was POD. There was a whole bunch of different bands that played. And I just remember um, hearing one woman talk about what we're here for and that we're here to serve God. We're not here to serve ourselves. Um, talked about loving the Lord your God, and I thought, I can't love myself. There's nothing about myself to love, but I can love God. And if God loves me, for who knows what reason, I gotta take my focus off trying to figure out how to like myself and just give it to God. And maybe by loving God enough, I can learn why He loves me and start to like myself a little bit more and, and figure out a way to get through the rest of this life because I sure don't wanna live but I also don't want to hurt my parents and the people around me by ending my life. And I had numerous thoughts all the time of wanting to die. I remember waking up in the morning and just thinking, there's no reason to get out of bed. Like, why do I have to get out of bed? Just the thought of having to get up, get dressed, and go to school was more than I could handle on my own. The temperature breaks this all-time low You say The song is called uh, Winter Affects What Is Most Weak and it's a song I wrote um, two winters ago when I was going through, um, I would say, depression and um, I guess it was a time in my life where I really didn't feel um, anything at all except a lot of anxiety and fear and worry and um, in that time I didn't really feel God presence even though I want to believe that or I want to feel God, I didn't and didn't feel that, you know, God was um, helping me or healing me. Um, and, but I wrote the song as kind of a response to that feeling of despair, um, that even in those times we don't feel God, that there's still a spirit in us that, that has light and that's carrying us through and that um, our ability to feel deep sadness is also from that place our ability from, um, to love can grow. And so I guess um, it was my way of seeing that my sadness is a way of, of loving other people because it, it allowed me to empathize with others. Um, and so in that way I could appreciate um, the depression. And also the song is kind of um, an encouragement to other people who uh, go through those seasons that um, that there is beauty and there is hope in it and that it does connect us.
So it's clear that Talia went through all kinds of challenges and hardships once she realized that she had depression. But she found hope in God, and we're going to hear more about that now. I held fast, and that's my, my main word, my code word, my life word, to hold fast to the Lord um, and, and the truth that He is the one in control. I'm not. He loves me, and He's told me over and over in His word that He loves me, and it doesn't matter how I feel about myself because He, you know, He's the one that knows everything. He's right. He's always right. He's the same every day, yesterday, today, forever and I can count on that truth. Part of the deliverance of everything too was seeing a certain lady, a counselor, who was amazing. And she defined to me a depression. She gave me a bit of a different spin on it than I ever realized. And I was always interested in going into healthcare and being a nurse. And so she put it to me this way. Depression is very similar to something like diabetes. It's an illness, it is not you being crazy. It is actually a chemical imbalance in your brain that's causing chaos in your body. Um, the physical parts of your body are affected. You know, your appetite, you get abdominal pain, you get headaches, you get physical symptoms. You know, the fatigue that can go with it, all those physical symptoms are not, you know, go directly or or connect exactly with that emotional. And in many, many people with depression, you know, whether they have a history of abuse, whether they have a history of other illnesses or not, you know, those chemicals are what needs to be changed. Not just your thinking or your prayer life or your, you know, lifestyle. There's a lot of things that can go along with, uh, to help with changing those chemicals besides medicines, but all together you need, a, um, you know, a whole variety of approaches and treatments that'll work for you. I can't imagine where I would be at this point if I didn't have the Lord. If I didn't have the Holy Spirit's strength living inside of me, I don't think I would be alive today. I'm positive that I would have taken my own life at some point because I couldn't live with the, the suffering and the pain that I was feeling. Without God, without the truth of his scriptures and knowing his unconditional love, you know, there wouldn't, I don't know that there would have been a way to get through it all like I did. Um, God revealed himself to me in so many ways, just his patience with all those times when I would, you know, fall back into a, be a deep depression and forget the truths that he'd told me. He would be patient, he would wait until, you know, somebody I'm sure was praying for me and would he would clear some of that way again and I would, I would, you know, come out of that fog, come out of that pit. And again, remember, you know, his word is the light that is gonna guide me to, you know, through to the next day. One day at a time was, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the days, it was one day at a time and having to just remember just today, I gotta get up, I gotta shower, I gotta read my Bible because if I don't renew that, um, you know, truth, the lies are just gonna take over again. Um, God was patient with me. He taught me his unconditional love um, without him, I would not have the self-control to, you know, maintain that, the healthy lifestyle to, to, you know, to try to do the things that help keep the chemicals in balance, to take my meds each day, to do the exercise I need to do, to avoid the things that make me feel worse, like the caffeine and things that you maybe think are helpful. Um, so he's taught me through the, the fruits of his spirit, through the power of his Holy Spirit inside of me that I can overcome this. And, you know, each day I'm reminded of, you know, his compassions and his faithfulness, which is new each day. Thinking about the theme of uh, depression or anxiety, um, I wanted to make it a journey as the painting kind of moves from one thing. So one thing to the next. So it starts with the path and the path in front of you and then the rainbow comes in from the top and it's, it's um, for me it's like the promise that God has spoken over us and he's given us this path and this future and he has plans for us and and he's inviting us on that. But as, as you grow up and as different 
things come into your life that it's where the trees start kind of in the distance and they're lighter and then they come closer and closer and then they start to be like right up in your face and blocking the path and sometimes you can't see where the beauty was where the promise was that you started with so as you journey um, then the, the light, the beauty starts to come through and when you step back you can see the colors and that it was, the promise was there all along. The beauty was there all along and um, yeah, that it's all a part of the bigger plan. When you're struggling with depression, it's easy to feel a lot of shame. Like you can't talk to people about the dark feelings that you're having. And if you really started to tell them how you felt, they might not understand. But God is open to hearing those feelings, even if they're kind of ugly. In the book of Psalms, David pours his heart out to God and he tells him everything that he's feeling, his hopelessness, his fears, his frustrations, even his anger. And God hears him and listens and loves him anyways. So if you're worried about what people are gonna think or whether or not you can be fully honest before God, know that he loves you and he cares about what's going on inside of you. Even if you don't understand why you're feeling the way you feel, you can tell him about it. You are not your illness. Depression is like a dark cloud hanging over your head, but it's not who you are. It's not your identity. And even though it might feel like you're alone in a dark room and there's no light, there are things that you can do to bring light into the situation. In 1 Peter 3 verse 9, it says that we are God's chosen people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, his special possessions, and that he has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So what are the things that you can do to bring that light into your life and to find that hope and freedom? Well, there's seven things I wanna tell you about today. That sounds like a lot, but the most important one is the first one, and that is, Talk to God about how you're feeling. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed. Just be honest and pour out your heart to Him. The second thing that you can do is tell a trusted adult. This could be your parents, it could be a guidance counselor at your school, or a youth leader. When you're struggling with depression, it's so important to share that struggle with somebody else so that they can help you and walk with you through it. The third is to talk to a professional. Like I mentioned before, depression is an illness. It's a chemical imbalance. And so meeting with a doctor or a psychiatrist is a, an important step to take in the process of getting healing. The fourth is diet and exercise. Eating healthy and getting outside and being active are proven to help people struggling with depression. The sixth thing you can do is get enough sleep at night. Often it's easy to stay up super late watching TV or on your phone, but it's so important to get enough sleep. And the last seventh is sunlight. Get outside, get in the sun. Again, this is scientifically proven to help when people are struggling with depressions, to make sure that you're getting outside and enjoying the sunlight. There's so many things that you can do, and these are just a few of the steps that you can take. The song that I wrote is called Hero because in that time I was just looking for some sort of 
hope, like some sort of thing to hang on to. I called a hero because I was looking for a hero in the beginning of the song, just thinking like I'm going around in these circles. I'm like, it's all, it's getting better and then it's getting worse again. It's getting better and it's getting worse again. And like, when is it gonna end? Like, is it ever gonna end? Am I gonna deal with this for my whole life? about like you know how there is a light at the end of the tunnel and um, and it's Jesus and that's the only way that you can get out of things like these and how I don't know what's coming before me and I don't know what's coming ahead but I do know that Jesus is there and that he'll he'll lead the way for me and he'll guide the way and even though you'll have like highs and then you'll have lows um, you still have to keep running to Jesus because he'll keep you and he'll, he's protecting you all the time, no matter what, even when it doesn't feel like it. And then at the end, it's just talking about like how great Jesus is, how he was, he was there all that, all that time that I thought he wasn't. And I just had to realize it. There's three things we want to leave you with today. First is a question for God. When you have some time later today or this week, ask God, who is someone that I can trust to reach out to for help? Or maybe if you're the friend of somebody, who is it that needs help in my life? And a step to take, reach out, ask someone for help. Don't be afraid to go to a trusted adult, your parent, a guidance counselor, a youth leader to get the support that you need. And finally, a resource to check out. Mindcheck.ca has all kinds of great information on depression and anxiety. And remember, you're a daughter of God and that changes everything. You don't need to feel ashamed of your struggle and you don't need to be defined by it either. You're only defined by who God says you are. You are made in His image. You are fearfully and wonderfully created.